I am Adil Kumar and in this video we will understand how to estimate the distance traveled in the given time where the speed is changing. Right. So the question here is the speed of a runner increased steadily during the first three seconds of a race. His speed at half second intervals is given in the table. Find lower and upper estimates for the distance he traveled during these three seconds. Table has the values for time which is in seconds and after every half of a second velocity is measured. So for 0 0.51, 1 1.52, 2.53 time in seconds we have velocity in feet per second 0, 5.4, 9.2 13.6, 17.2, 18.5 and 20.2. You need to find the distance covered during this period of 3 seconds. You can always pause the video and answer the question. Now we are actually estimating the distance lower and the upper. So we will estimate both lower and the upper. So it is like finding area under the curve where for lower we'll use the left side right of the rectangle for upper we'll use the right side of the rectangle right so that is kind of important to understand so in this particular case you know what is distance uh, let me sketch this triangle which helps us to remember how distance speed and time are related distance is velocity into time correct okay? So that is what distance is. So the distance traveled basically is equal to product of velocity and time. Correct? Now let's find this distance on the lower side. So when we say lower side, we'll use the left side of the B, the velocity, right? So let us say this forms a triangle. Uh, okay, let me sketch this a bit here to make you understand what I'm trying to do here. So let us say if we sketch this graph, then at 0 it is 0, okay, and then you find it is at 0 it is 0. Then at every 0.5 interval, we are given some, so there are 6 intervals, so 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I'm just trying to squeeze it in, right? And let's say uh, 20 is maximum, so approximately, I'm just keeping 20 here, okay? And then this is 0, so this is 20, we say this is 10. 15 and 5, then we have 5.4, let's say somewhere here, right, 5.4, 9 is close to 10, okay, and then we have 13, 13 is, uh, okay, and then we have 17.2, uh, maybe somewhere there, and say like this, so, so initially we start with 0, so let me just sketch a graph here approximately, okay, so let's say this is the graph, so when I'm saying the lower bound, what I'm trying to really say here is that if I make my rectangles at these distances, right, this is my first rectangle, then the lower bound rectangle will have zero as the velocity. That's my second rectangle. So the second rectangle will have that as my velocity. So these are the rectangles. Do you understand? So that is how I'm going to kind of complete this. So we have one, two, three, four, I don't know, I made seven. So there are six of them, right? So three seconds, yeah, six of them. So that's okay. Okay, so I think that's good. So what we have here is, uh, let me write it down now. Well, I was not intending to draw this, but now we are drawn, okay, three. So we'll write this as one second, and this is two seconds, three seconds. We're writing this as five. Um, 10, 15, and 20, approximately. Okay, don't bother about it. But it is good to explain you the concept. So, so when we are using the lower estimate, we are actually using the left side of the rectangle, left end point, I should say, to find the area under this curve, right? So, so basically, the area will be zero for the first one, and for the next one, it will be this area, then it will be that area. Do you get the point, right? So these are the areas which will give you distance in each interval, right? Now, as you can see, 
each interval is of 0.5 seconds, right? Each interval is of 0.5 seconds, right? So this width here is 0 0.5 seconds. This is time in seconds, correct? And here we have velocity in feet per second, right? Now, area of this curve will be, so let me write down the lower side will be L. And since we have six divisions, I'm using six here. So lower side, six. Area of the first one is change in time times velocity. Velocity is zero for us. We are multiplying uh, zero with with 0 0.5, correct? Right? Because that's the change in width, right? And the height is zero. So we'll do uh, zero times, let's do zero times uh, 0 0.5. Since 0 0.5 is the interval, is it okay? Right. For the next one, again, this is 0 0.5, but the value is, is 5.4. This is slightly higher, that's the value, correct? Right? So what we see here is that each interval is 0 0.5 and the height is same as this okay let me write down the general formula first that really helps right so basically we are saying that the lower bound will be let me write down general formula now here is sum of all these areas of the triangles where i varies from 1 to 6 do you get the idea and where the value of the function we are taking about is x i minus 1 do you see that xi minus 1 times delta x. So in our case, delta x is equals to 0 0.5, since that is the interval, do you see that? And, uh, and xi is actually, don't get bothered with these numbers. This is x0, x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do you see that? Those are your xi's. So, so this one, this is x0, this one, this one here is x1, this is x2, not 1, okay, x3, then we have x of 4, x5, and x6. So these are the six values of x at a distance of 0 0.5. So we have six intervals, correct? So from left side, these intervals are at 0 0.5, these are your these intervals these are the positions at which you have these intervals perfect so what we need to find is the value of the function this is the value of the function at that point right so this is f of 0 0.5 5. this is f of 1.0 you get the idea right and for us this is x0 this is x1 this is x2 x3 x4 x5 and x6 now i think it's absolutely clear Okay, let's continue. So the area of the first one will be zero times the value, which is delta x. So delta x is the same for all. Now this value is, next one is 5.4 times 0 0.5. Okay, let me write 0.5. Then we have 9.2 times 0 0.5. Then we have 13.6 times 0 0.5 plus, let me write here now, okay, plus, <laughs> 17.2 uh, so we are taking the left side values right times is 0 0.5 and then 18.5 times 0 0.5 we'll have six of these right one two three four five six and now you can see from here so let me just ignore this for the time being we can take 0 0.5 common right delta x which is same and inside you get some of these terms right that becomes easy to understand zero plus 5.4 plus 9.2 plus 13.6 plus I hope that makes it simple right so this is simple correct so this is your left bound so let's calculate this now so it is uh, okay so it is 0 0.5 within brackets so we'll add 0 plus 5.4 plus 9.2 plus 13.6 plus 17.2 plus 18.5 correct so we have six of them equals to in decimals 31.95 so what we get here is is 31.95 right you could round to 38 32 right so let's round it to 32 right the units will be in feet perfect now let's calculate the right side which will be the 
upper estimate right so right side estimate will be the upper estimate which is going to be if I use this formula it will be let me use the formula first uh, right so it'll be from i equals to 1 to 6 but we are taking the value on the right side so which is f of x i you get the point that's the difference okay so let's write down so as we have seen delta x is common which is 0 0.5 and we are taking the right side value so these values now will be taken so we'll write down this as 5.4 plus 9.2 plus 13.6 plus 17.2 plus 18.5 plus 20.2 do you get an idea and again we can use the calculator to find the answer right so let's add them up so we have 0 0.5 within brackets 5.4 plus 9.2 plus 13.6 plus 17.2 plus 18.5 plus 20.2 right and that gives you let's do decimal equivalent 42.05 so we can write this as 42.05 and round it to let's say 42 feet is it okay so what we have found here as our answer uh, the lower estimate is is uh, 32 feet right and the upper estimate is 42 42 feet so the area is somewhere in between you can always see and at times if you want to be more precise you could actually find the average of these two you could do that but the question is only to give you values for lower and upper so remember if the graph is concave down in that case the left side rectangle values will give you lower estimate and the right side will give you higher estimate so when we did really find the higher estimate second case we were measuring this area do you see that we were measuring this area so it, definitely it is higher the right side values. do you see that so that is higher so that is higher so that's why we got slightly more value when we did the upper estimate do you see that so that is this area which we are talking about. Amal Kumar, I hope that helps you to understand the concept. At times, instead of velocity, we can also write this as the uh, rate of change of displacement, right? So, so we could also write this as S dash T. So sometimes for our calculus students, we will use that nomenclature, which is velocity, right? That's important to understand also. I am Anil Kumar and I hope that gives you some idea of how to estimate distance from table of values giving time with velocity. Amadil Kumar, you can always share my videos, like them if you like, and post questions. Thank you and all the best.